Good morning, friends, and welcome to a brand new day. Today is Wednesday, October the 14th, 2020. My name is Matthew Shapton. I'm a pastor with the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And today I'm coming to you from Juneau Beach, Florida, the east coast of Florida. And that's important for why we're here, because today we're going to talk a little bit about mission. Not only am I a pastor, but I'm also a mission developer. A mission developer is someone who is called by the church, called by the Holy Spirit, to start a new ministry, to start a new mission, a new place where people gather and worship and give thanks and praise to God, learn all about of Jesus Christ and what God has done for us through Christ and learn what it means to be forgiven. So a mission developer starts a new thing in a new place. So our story starts here in Juneau Beach, Florida on the East Coast because the mission that we are going to be starting is on the west side of Florida, southwest Florida. And we're going to end up over there today for our time together. I'm going to invite you to join me in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to share with you the first half uh, of a reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible from Isaiah chapter 43. We'll read the whole chapter today, but we're going to start here in Juneau Beach on the East Coast with the first half of Isaiah 43, and then we're going to be on the west side of Florida for the second half of that reading. So first, join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> God of grace and mercy, we come to you today giving you thanks and praise for this new day that you've given us. For an opportunity to better know who you are and how you are at work, even in the midst of difficult, challenging, and uncertain times, you continue to create. You continue to bring new things to life and to light. So be with us today as we read from Isaiah, as we learn more about you and your people and their journey. And join us, Lord, and help us feel your presence in our journey as we walk together to create a new thing as co-creators with you, because you walk with us. We feel your presence. So Holy Spirit, come. Fill us. Renew us. Give us strength for this journey that we'll take together. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and I'm going to be reading Isaiah 43. And for the first part of our time together, I'm going to read Isaiah 43, 1 through 21. So be listening for creation. Be listening for God's accompaniment as we hear these words from Isaiah. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you my name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be there. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. I will say to the north and the south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. 
it was I who created them. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Gather the nations together. Assemble the peoples of the world. Which of their idols has ever foretold such things? Which can predict what will happen tomorrow? Where are the witnesses of such predictions? Who can verify that they spoke the truth? But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me. Believe in me and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been and there never will be. I, yes, I am the Lord. And there is no other Savior. First I predicted your rescue, then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord your Holy One, Israel's Creator and King. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and the owls too, too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Word of God, word of life. So we'll pick up in Isaiah when we get to our next location today for our time together. But again, let me take this opportunity to welcome you on this journey, this new mission that God is calling us to start on the other side of Florida. We'll talk a little bit more about that when I meet you there. So until then, until I see you on the other side of the state, peace be with you, my friends. Amen. Okay, we started our time together today on the east coast of Florida, on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. And we're going to end our time together today. We're still in October the 14th, Wednesday. We're gonna end our time together on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, I'm in Naples, uh, waiting for the sun to set, and I invite you to join me. Uh, we only get one sunset, so if I make a mistake during this, uh, I apologize. Please show me some grace. The reason that I have brought you here to this place, the reason we started in one place and made our way to another place in our conversation about mission, is because mission involves movement. The book of Isaiah, where we started our time together, uh, in our first reading, and we'll finish that reading from Isaiah 43. The book of Isaiah, uh, scholars often break into three sections based on the activity of the people of Israel. Section 1 uh, being chapters 1 through 35, section 2, 36 through 39, and where we find ourselves for this reading, for this time, Isaiah 3, which is chapters 40 through 66. 
So we talked this morning about mission. And I explained to you that uh, as a mission developer, uh, I've been called by the church, called by the Holy Spirit to, um, to start a new mission in a new place. And that place isn't far from here. It's north of where we are right now by a couple hours, and we'll get there. And that place is Babcock Ranch. And we are so excited to join the people of Babcock Ranch. We will be, my family and myself, we'll be full-time residents permanent residents of Babcock Ranch this time next week. So we are in motion. We are moving towards Babcock Ranch and we cannot wait uh, to be there to start that new mission with those people, those amazing people in that beautiful place. So uh, through Facebook, through YouTube and a website that is almost ready, uh, we'll be able to uh, connect to tell you what's happening, to um, have a chance to pray together, to share this journey. That's why we're here now. This is the beginning of a journey that we will be on together, that I'm inviting you to join us on together, this new mission in Babcock Ranch. So allow me to pick up where we left off in the book of Isaiah. And I ended at verse 21, but I want to go back and start at verse 19 and read through the end through verse 28. Isaiah chapter 43 and again this is from the New Living translation starting with verse 19. For I am about to do something new. See I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me the jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me before the whole world. But dear family of Jacob, you refuse to ask for my help. You have grown tired of me, O Israel. You've not brought me sheep or goats for burnt offerings. You have not honored me with sacrifices. Though I have not burdened, though I have not burdened and wearied you with requests for gain, grain offerings and frankincense, you have not brought me fragrant calamus or pleased me with the fat from sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your faults. I, yes, I alone, will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Let us review the situation together. And you can present your case to prove your innocence. From the very beginning, your first ancestors sinned against me. All your leaders broke my laws. That's why I have disgraced your priests. I have decreed complete destruction for Jacob and shame for Israel. This ends our reading from Isaiah chapter 43. So I love the book of Isaiah because in Isaiah, especially in this verse, in this chapter here, uh, chapter 43, we hear of God's power, we hear of God's presence, and we hear of God's passion, God's love for God's people. God is saying, I know that you've made mistakes, but I'm doing a new thing. Where we find ourselves in Isaiah 3, these chapters, chapters 40 through 66, God's people are on the move. They're returning to Jerusalem. God is on the move as we speak. During this difficult time, God continues to create. I'm going to wait for this helicopter to go past. So again, I invite you to join in this journey as we listen for God and what God would have us do in this new mission in Babcock Ranch. I invite you to join us by sharing your prayer requests. Uh, If you can join us in Babcock Ranch, we'd love to see you. And and residents of Babcock Ranch, we are looking forward to, uh, to being with you, living our lives daily with you. 
and creating this new mission together with you. Dear friends, know that you are loved. Know that you are forgiven. Know that you're children of God, loved by the creator of this beautiful, beautiful place that we live. I want to close our time together with a word of prayer. And this is a prayer for the church. I invite you to join me in the word of prayer. Oh God, because you elected from eternity to save us from destroying ourselves, we praise you. That you gave promise of salvation to Adam and his seed. That you saved Noah and his family in the ark of faith. That you protected and saved ancient Israel as your people, we give you thanks. That you saved mankind by the death and resurrection of our Lord the Christ. That you extended your kingdom so that many tribes and nations would be created. That you have preserved your word in the Holy Scriptures. We pray you rule in our hearts by faith, promote unity among us by love, seal in us the hope of the resurrection, finish your work among us through your word and sacraments. For Jesus' sake, amen. I'll be updating you on what's happening in this new mission through Facebook and again in a website that's just about ready. So join me. Uh, this is going to be a beautiful journey. Until I see you again, wherever that might be. Peace be with you, my friends. Amen.